Hello. My name is Stephen Hawking. Physicist, cosmologist, and something of a dreamer. Although I cannot move, and I have to speak through a computer, in my mind, I am free. Free to explore the deepest questions of the universe. Among them, the deepest of all. Is there a God who created and controls the universe? From the stars and the planets, to you and me. Finding out takes us on a journey through the laws of nature. For there, I think, lies the answer to the age-old mystery of how the universe was made and how it really works. Check it out. Stephen William Hawking was born in Oxford, England on the 300th anniversary of the death of Galileo on January 8, 1942. At 17 years old, he entered Oxford University. Stephen Hawking has admitted in many cases that he was not the most ambitious student. One day he calculated that he spent about maybe an hour a day on schoolwork. In 1962, Hawking moved to Cambridge University for a PhD in cosmology and one year later was diagnosed with ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. ALS is a progressive motor neuron disease, so over time, the victim loses functionality of muscles. And over the past decade, Stephen Hawking has gradually lost the use of most of his muscles, but his mind remains quite keen. I think that once he was hit with this earth-shattering diagnosis, he actually sought a refuge in doing physics. And if anything, it helped him become one of the world's great scientists. Although his diagnosis only gave him two and a half years to live, Hawking married in 1965 and stunned the science world in 1974 with his PhD on black holes. Stephen taught us how to define a black hole. He then made a brilliant discovery that uh, black holes uh, can radiate, Hawking radiation. That then showed the whole world the connection between black hole physics and thermodynamics. And that connection has been a central theme in theoretical physics ever since. He became the Sherman Fairchild Distinguished Scholar at Caltech in 1974. And five years later, Hawking was named Cambridge University's Lucasian Professor of Mathematics, an honor bestowed on only 14 people since 1663. Stephen Hawking is a theoretical physicist of a very specific kind. He studies cosmology, particle physics, gravity. That's trying to understand the very basic laws of physics as well as where the universe itself came from. Hawking sees things that other people didn't see time and again. He just thinks more deeply than most of the rest of us. And those insights have had big consequences. Even though Hawking deteriorated to the point that he needed a computerized speech synthesizer to speak, he wrote A Brief History of Time in 1988, selling more than 10 million copies. Stephen Hawking's book, A Brief History of Time, which was a bestseller for weeks and weeks, was about some of the most profound questions that face humanity. It's really about where we come from and where we're headed, from a physicist's point of view. After expanding upon his work with several more books, Hawking increased his popularity by guest starring in TV shows like The Simpsons, Star Trek The Next Generation, and The Big Bang Theory. Star, more than three times the size of our sun, ought to end its life, how? With a collapse. The gravitational forces of the entire mass overcoming the electromagnetic forces of individual atoms and so collapsing inwards. If the star is massive enough, it will continue this collapse, creating a black hole, where the warping of space-time is so great that nothing can escape, not even light. It gets smaller, smaller. The star, in fact, gets denser as atoms, even subatomic particles, get literally crushed into smaller and smaller space. And at its end point, what are we left with? A space-time singularity. Space and time come to a stop. If Einstein is right, right, if general relativity is correct, then yes. universe is expanding, yes? Yes. Okay, so 
if you reverse time, then the universe is getting smaller. All right. So, what if I reverse the process all the way back to see what happened at the beginning of time itself? At the beginning of time itself? Yes. So the universe getting smaller and smaller, getting denser and denser, hotter and hotter... Well, you as mean we wind back the clock? Yeah, exactly, wind back the clock. Wind back the clock. Is that what you're doing? <laughs> you're winding back the clock. That is what I'm doing. <laughs> well, keep winding. I know. You've got quite a long way to go. Keep winding. I don't want to fall in. Well, you've got to go back to the beginning of time. You've got a long way to go. Well, keep winding. Keep winding. <laughs> Until you get... A singularity. space-time singularity. So the universe born from a black hole exploding. Keep going. What do you mean, keep going? What? Before the universe began? No, 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 no. Keep going, develop the mathematics. <clears throat> Stephen, Jane was telling me that you have a, a beautiful uh, theorem. Um, that, that proves that the universe um, ha had a beginning? Is that it? That was my PhD thesis. My new project disproves it. Uh, disproves it? Yeah. Oh. Um, so then you, you no longer believe in the creation? What one believes is irrelevant in physics. Irrelevant in physics. Oh. <clears throat> I see. Stephen's done a U-turn. The big new idea is that the universe has no boundaries at all. No boundaries, no beginning. And no God. Oh. Oh, I see. I, uh, I thought that um, you'd prove the universe had a beginning and thus a need for a creator. Um, my mistake. No, mine. Stephen is looking for a single theory that explains all the forces in the universe. Therefore, God must die. Uh, why must God die? I, I don't see. The two great pillars of physics are quantum theory, the laws that govern the very small particles, electrons and so on, and general relativity. Ah, uh, yes, Einstein. Einstein's theory, the laws that govern the very large planets and such, but quantum and relativity... Don't tell me. They're different? They don't remotely play by the same rules. If the world were all potatoes, then easy. You could trace a precise beginning, as Stephen once did. A moment of creation. Hallelujah. God lives. If you incorporate peas into the menu, well, then it all goes a little... Fizz up. <laughs> yes. God is back on the endangered species list. <laughs> well, I expect he'll cope. And physics is back in business. Yes. Physics is back in business. There are two things that are really outstanding about my father, and the first is his life in science and his work as a scientist. And the second is his humanity and his courage, because he suffered so greatly, kept on day after day, working, um, making great discoveries in science, communicating his discoveries to a popular audience, and maintaining his sense of humor. And sometimes I think he's become such a familiar, iconic figure that people have almost forgotten how much he suffered, how hard it is for him to do what he does. If the universe gave you a giant gift tomorrow, an answer, what's the answer you'd most want? I want to know why the universe exists, why there is something rather than nothing. Hawking has said he believes in the creative majesty of scientific law, not a personal god for humans. When you look at the vast size of the universe, and how insignificant an accidental human life is in it, that seems most implausible. And it doesn't seem to make you sad ever that we are so insignificant in the universe. There is a fundamental difference between religion, which is based on authority, and science, which is based on observation and reason. Science will win, 
because it works. We have discovered how the laws of nature, acting on the mass and energy of the universe, started a process that would eventually produce us. Sitting here on our planet, pretty pleased at having worked it all out. So when people ask me if a god created the universe, I tell them that the question itself makes no sense. Time didn't exist before the Big Bang, so there is no time for God to make the universe in. It's like asking for directions to the edge of the Earth. The Earth is a sphere, it doesn't have an edge, so looking for it is a futile exercise. We are each free to believe what we want. And it's my view that the simplest explanation is, there is no God. No one created the universe, and no one directs our fate. This leads me to a profound realization. There is probably no heaven, and no afterlife either. We have this one life to appreciate the grand design of the universe. For that, I am extremely grateful.